Thanks so Thank much. you. Thank you. Uh, my presentation is on cause alert analysis, or CLA. You know when you land in Australia, you have to come up with an acronym or they don't let you in. <laughs> so mine is CLA. It's a theory and methodology to how to have deeper and longer lasting change. When I work with organizations, I ask them, you have this new vision, but do you have a new measurement of it? Do you have a new vision? Do you have systemic enablers? Has your culture transformed? And do you have a new supportive metaphor? So often they have a vision and strategy, but they don't have these four layers. So we'll talk more about that. Now, if you're engaged in change, you can often get tired. That's almost single loop. It becomes overwhelming. You're inspired today, but how about Monday morning? So the Monday morning question to me is crucial. What's the one thing you might do differently from this presentation or earlier presentations? What's the thing that you enact, you change your behavior? There's also double loop learning, equally important. So it's not what you'll do differently, but you have the mechanism to learn about learning. So many organizations, they want to predict the future. I said, well, you might get the future wrong, but if you can create a learning framework, you'll get it right. To do the learning framework, you have to have a narrative. So the narrative foresight is almost the most important part. What's your metaphor of the future? If you can figure out your story, you can use your story to leverage, to enable a possible future. So start to think about what is my story about the future? What might that be? Now often when people think about the future, they think it's out there, robotic, space travel. But as Professor Molivir says, the future is not an empty space. It's like the past. It's an active aspect of the present. So as you can guess, thinking about the future is in fact to change today. So the future then is an asset. It's a resource that we can wisely use. It's a narrative to be employed. So this process, causal analysis, CLA, is how do we employ the narrative? And the reason why we engage in this is one, the world is changing and the rate of change is heterogeneous. It's different in different parts of the world. It's different when you're 80 versus when you're 18. And two, to do this well, you have to do multiple stakeholders, whole of government, whole of business, partnership. But the reality is most of us don't like some of these stakeholders. <laughs> and finally, given this rate of unequal change, we lose agency. So we get inspiration, but Celia says, let's go beyond inspiration. Let's change multiple levels of reality. So it's how to bring back efficacy in this. Now, if we don't do this, we go to something called the use future. It doesn't work, but we keep on doing it. The evidence says it's not working, but we keep on doing it, and we get this type of future you see there. If you work with international policing, their use futures, they just keep on driving around, even though that's not the best way to have safety. So you have to challenge the conventional future and create something else. That's transformative foresight. Bring back agency. Two universities that I've worked with, BRAC in Bangladesh, use them in Malaysia, they came up with a new vision, but using CLA, they said, how do we measure the vision? You have to have new metrics. The metrics was how much of their research funding goes to the bottom billion. And you have to then enable it so professors have a structure where they do research to help the bottom billion. So it's not just having the vision, but how do you enable it further? You can see there it's the global student connected to community, digitally aware, involved in social justice. That becomes what moves them forward. Now, if you're doing this, you have to see the world differently. So can anyone just yell out, what does that look like? OK, this is a very smart group. Yes, it's Mars. It's Mars looking at Earth. You can tell, right? So it changes your perception. We also want to see both worlds. You want to see the ships and the bridges. And you want to be able to see multiple perspectives from different views, <clears throat> not just the same view. That takes skill sets, whole of brain learning, EQ, IQ, spiritual intelligence. You want to bring that on board. So the structure of CLA is quite simple. There's the data, the litany, the empirical world, the systemic world, what engineers, designers bring us, the worldview, what philosophers talk about, and myths, metaphors, what storytellers. As Campbell and Thompson say, myths create us. So in CLA, we work at all four levels and we accept all levels of reality. It's included. If you want to do short-term change, it's the litany. If you want longer term, change the system. 
even deeper you change the culture. Longest term is you change the core narrative, the core story, the organizational, the personal, or the civilizational. Now, if you're a data person, and you may be, metaphors look imagined, right? Weird stuff. So your own perspective tells you what's really real, what's imagined. This is suggesting all levels are real. So play in multiple spaces. So when I work with organizations, we say, if you want a different future, change how you measure the world. We used to always be stuck on GDP. Korea started to talk about the coolness index. Perhaps 10 years later, you get Gangnam style. <laughs> Bhutan wants gross national happiness. Triple bottom line, mother's index. If you want a different future, you have to measure it. Level two, systemic changes. Person invariant, doesn't matter who you are, buckle up. If you're male, they've found putting those little spider things in your urinals leads to cleaner bathrooms. Bad aimer, good aimer, doesn't matter. The structure changes behavior. And there's good scientific studies that support that. If you want a healthier hospital, green design. Work with hospital engineers. How do you design for safety, for sunlight, for plants? How do you bring them in for people to recover quicker? How do you design for aging? <laughs> Systemic changes, ultimately done well, reframe culture. And culture is the worldviews, the ideologies. All of us see the world differently. It's a whole of worldview effort. Feminist, green, left, conservative. The Singapore government now, they're having a national conversation, and they're using CLA to unpack all the data. How do we use this and collect the data and start to think about what's our new narrative? Father has been, father's always right, has been the old narrative. What's their new narrative? It becomes a way to unpack culture. But the deepest part in my perspective, keeps on coming back to culture eat strategy for breakfast. I was working with one Queensland government group in charge of developing policy frameworks for having people work from home. When we did the CLA process, their conclusion was their core narrative is employees are lazy and not to be trusted. <laughs> so they would have come up with a report but ensured it didn't, wasn't implemented, right? because their story contradicted their official terms of reference. Given we live in a world of contradictions, then you pretend to have done a good job. The CLA process showed that culture eats strategy for breakfast transformed the story. To do that, you have to critically unpack questions. You have to unpack yourself, challenge. Look, lady, you're the one who asked for a famous movie star with dark hair, <laughs> strong nose and deep set eyes. Now, I showed this to one brilliant geneticist. He said, Inayatullah, we can't create that right now. I said, is that the only thing you got from that? <laughs> now, it's not just the human issue. It's the issue of language. Is language transparent? What I say you hear, or we know language is opaque. Politics, culture, data, it's embedded in language. So we have to challenge that. Now, those of you perhaps skeptical here, look at some recent studies on metaphor and, and data. Two groups of people, both given the same data on criminal behavior in their neighborhood. Group one, the metaphor they used is crime is a beast. Their conclusion, policy recommendation was put money in catching and jailing criminals. Group two, same data of criminal behavior in their neighborhood, but the metaphor they used was crime is a virus. What's their recommendation? Educate and end poverty. If you're engaged in catalyzing change, in long-term social change, be very clear on the metaphors you use. We know scientists, brilliant as they are, present data. They don't tell the other story. We have to do both. That's what CLA suggests. Now, that's the theory. What about case studies? So let's look at some. If you want to change the educational system, why is it so difficult? One hypothesis is it's based on the factory. You see the factory, education comes in, models itself off the factory. New technologies that are space-time invariant come in, what do we do? We put the kids in rows. Why is that? Surveillance, control, or what is, what's going on? 
So we have to transform the factory. When I've done with Queen, when I've worked with Queensland principals, the type of things they say, one, create your own factory, co-create with students, bring in the stakeholders. Two, a smart, efficient private factory. Or three, go even more radical, Silicon Valley, forget the factory. We did that in one building, and one of the minister's assistants came in and said, what's going on here? There's no learning going on here. We had beanbag, space, time, and variation. So if you start to create that, you get resistance from the past. He remembered the way he learned in 1920s. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> the last one is, okay, let's make it student center. Use the shopping center as a metaphor for knowledge. In that sense, you choose. Now, the learning is there, let me rethink the factory, challenge my assumption, and come up with alternatives. That creates possibility. But my deeper learning was, in fact, the real issue in bringing in digital pedagogies, new technologies in classrooms was the principals, once we pushed them, were unable to give up on I'm in charge. I'm a smart, older person. This is suggesting I'm no longer in charge. So what do we do? So let's go step by step in the CLA process. Level one, there's a knowledge revolution. Let's join it, right? So laptop for each child. To do that well, you have to make sure there's systemic support. Principals tell me, I got the notebooks. They broke. I didn't know what to do. I put them in the closet. OK, <laughs> bad strategy. So you have to make sure there's a service contract. And you have to make sure you design classroom spaces for the new technologies. To do that, you have to change the pedagogy from industrial to digital. You have to change how you learn, how you teach, how you interact, who you are. That means a different story. It can't be technology is a silver bullet. And we find I am in charge is not so useful when your students are smarter than you. <laughs> you, have to weigh, you may have wisdom, so you have to find a way to include their, their knowledge in your experience. That means the new story may be we are all learners. Now, CLA is not just going up and down, it's going across perspectives. So if we look at this work we've done in Malaysia, current reality is traditional teaching and learning is the best. It's rigid. It's the lecturer's knows best. The metaphor is the regiment. Well, let's challenge that from a different view. So we challenge it from the view of the student. Student learning, self-assessment, democratic. But their metaphor is tug of war. We want this world, but the ministry and lecturer says this, we're caught between worlds. You want us to go here, but he's still grading me. What happens to me? So bringing them together, we come up with this third preferred future, holistic teaching and learning, ministry assessment plus some self-assessment. And then we change the story for the orchestra. And you, make, you may take turns being the director, but the main goal is you change the story of the regiment to the orchestra, and you have harmony. You have different actors playing together. So the, the reconstructed, transformed CLA gives the way out. I've been working with Queensland Library, and they're just brilliant, the librarians. Their challenge is budgets are going to go down. It's very clear. People are borrowing fewer books. What do you do? So they start to think about, who are we? They said, we're keeper of the collection. So where do you go to? We have to transform and become innovator of the gardens. What are the gardens? Digital spaces, 3D printing spaces, workshop spaces for the elderly. We go into a process where we think through, who are we? So we let go of the collection and enter a new space. If you do that in terms of now structurally, your measurement is books loaned to visits and workshops the collection to augmented reality, the expert to co-creation, co-curation. From the keeper of the collection, and it's painful, you let it go, innovator of the gardens. So it's four levels of transformation. Now, at the core of this, of course, is metaphorical transformation. You have to do all levels, but I find the metaphors in my work seem to be more profound. So this is one ministry, and they wanted to be global risk taker, innovative, I said brilliant. I said, tell me your core narrative. Our core narrative, we're in a castle. The king is the minister, the queen is the secretary, and the knights are the principals. I said, well, that sounds like a blast. He said, yes, lots of fun, we have parties, it's all good. 
I said, they said, but there's a problem. I said, what's the problem? Well, outside the castle is a moat, and there's hungry wolves everywhere. I said, who are they? Parents, teachers, <laughs> students, the media. So what would you do? How do you transform that metaphor in able in order to achieve the future you want? So what might you do? Someone yell something out? Yeah, so there's knock the walls down. The type of things people say is knock the walls down. Make it more transparent. Invite the wolves in. When I did this with international policing, they said, no, 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 no. Find the head of the wolf pack and eliminate them. <laughs> well, I, I, said, I, said, I said, okay, I'm okay with that, but your strategy is to be a global innovator. <laughs> that just says you're more afraid of the risk than the risk is. So the issue is not the right or wrong metaphor. Does my metaphor serve me in the future I wish for? If so, if it doesn't, how do I transform the story? So a lot of the work is you come up with a new story. This is the National Department of Statistics. When we did the inner work, they said they're brilliant mathematicians. We grew up as the last kids picked, the last children picked. When we did the visioning, they imagined their children saying, Mom, Dad, you have a cool job as a statistician. Now, at the narrative level, that meant going from scorekeeper, neutral, not in the game, to trusted expert, in the game, advising government, advising the prime minister, and more importantly, part of the national conversation on how we should remeasure the future. So this becomes a national issue. As a scorekeeper, it's great, you're just counting. As a trusted expert, you're creating a different future. And that was quite profound for them. At the, this is the local council on the Sunshine Coast. They said they love their work, but it's a merry-go-round, right? Different mayor every three years, nothing truly changes. But they don't want dramatic 24-7 change. They want some safety security. Their new story was more choices going to the fairground, from merry-go-round to fairground. Now, these narratives are not just organizational, they can be civilizational. When I worked with one electronic company, they, were, they came in the evening dressed as Superman, all the men. <laughs> so I said, okay, it's not about copiers, it's about serving and saving the world. The females didn't know how to dress, because the civilizational narratives were Snow White, Cinderella, waiting for Prince Charming, not creating your own future. So these civilizational stories are practices that need to be transformed and they can be applied to the self. One woman, she said, should she get married? I said, I don't know. She said, I'm caught between freedom autonomy, the bird flying, versus security and safety, the bird in the cage. Conclusion on the ledge, some freedom and some safety. That gives her a way forward. And the last version here, a CEO, I'm very good at playing on grass, the world has changed. His conclusion, how to play on multiple courts, Use EQ, SQ, IQ, multiple intelligences. But even deeper, get in touch with his inner child and love the game. Change his KPI. It's not just about growth, it's about being present. Ultimately, that led to him thinking about in the long term, he'll become a coach. So that was the narrative transformation. I hope you figure out your new story, and I hope you find ways to measure it. And I hope you ensure there's systemic enablers and a culture that supports your transformation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sahel. Thank you, Sahel.